Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of East Side Hockey Manager with the Boston Bruins, and it's the beginning of off-season number two. So let's jump right into it. So if we look at our schedule, trading resumes today. We got the draft in a week. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make any deals. I, you can see I kind of messed around with a couple of things. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make any deals before the um, before the draft. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to make any any deals before the draft. It, none of the players that we have that I would want to trade have an absolute ton of value right now. So it might be something we use to move up in the draft if there's somebody that we want. Because I believe right now we have three first-round picks. So let's just go ahead and move move forward a day. I may put a couple of these guys on the block. Someone like Bowden, maybe put him on the block. I mean, he's been he's fine, but given that he's, I mean, he's 24, he's he's okay, but he's uh, any anything interesting here? The lottery. All right, so where are we picking? We have 20. Oh, we only have two first round picks this year, 20 and 27. I thought we had a third. Was our third pick last year? Must have been last year, or next year, rather. All right, so we got our first-round pick and the Rangers' first-round pick, which may allow us to move up in the draft, uh, frankly. So let's uh, – Stadnika, uh, we will put him on the block. We will put Bowden on the block. Okay, so somebody wants Bowden. We can probably offer him up in a deal, but again, I I would rather use him to move up in the draft. Yeah, two fourth round picks. It's not going to get it done. Ben Gleason's gross. Connor Ingram, no thank you. Matt Benning in a fourth doesn't do anything for me. A couple of thirds from St. Louis, a third and a fourth from Toronto, but St. Louis was like the best team in the league this year, right? 28th. Toronto wants to give us a third and a fourth. Uh, I mean, that's a top of the third round pick and a fourth round pick from Toronto. Well, Achari, what do they think about this? I'm assuming they think it's a fair offer. So fourth round pick. Oh, it's a third round pick next year. Can I have your third round pick this year? They don't have a third round pick this year. So we get a third round pick next year and the fourth and the fourth round pick 99th overall this year. So what do we have for draft picks this season? Okay, so yeah, it was next year's first. We have our first. So this year we have two firsts. We have a second, a third, a fourth. So this would give us two fourths, and it would give us five picks in the top 100, which I kind of like. And then a third round pick next year. So we would have two firsts, three thirds next year, and four fourths. We got a ton of draft capital next season. I think we do this. I'm good with that. I didn't think I was going to make a deal, but I'm okay with that. Oh, that's right. And we're going to get a third. I forgot about this one. We're going to get a third round pick for Kyle Clegg. Uh, I offered him up. I am fine with that. Let's complete that deal. So we had some draft capital this year. So we do pick up an additional third round pick this season. So we'll have two firsts, a second, two thirds, and two fourths this year. Next year, we have two firsts, a second, two third, and three fourths. But it does mean we've limited our depth a little bit on the D-line, which is okay. Yeah, you know, and if we can move up like we did last year, you know, we picked up uh, Fantini uh, in the first round, moving up to number nine. If we can, if there's somebody that we have our eyes set, right now there isn't. There isn't anybody in particular that I'm saying I got to have, but... You know, there might be somebody. So they placed Danforth, Justin Danforth. Yeah, no, I'm good. 
and that also frees up a little bit of cap space. Frees up about about three and a half million, moving uh, moving Clegg and uh, Bowden. And Bowden we had just picked up, so I didn't really have any. I wasn't really. Um, you know, there was no. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wasn't attached to him, I guess. So we'll keep just keep Simmons here up to the draft, I think, at this point, unless we get an offer for one of those players we we have on the block. Ooh, and I just saw a tweet from Wolverine Studios, and I know we're getting off track here, but Wolverine Studios just announced the Draft Day uh, Sports Pro Basketball 2023 will it first access tonight. I certainly will be putting together a, uh, a, a Let's Play for that. I started my Draft Day Sports Pro Football Let's Play, but it bugged out. I'm looking at a bugged out screen right now. Um I have a, I have to mess around with that. I have a feeling there's something going on with the, um, with the, 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 the schedule. So I got to take a look at it. I offered Patrice Bergeron a one year, $2 million contract. I think he is ready to retire. So, uh, greatest assets, Dubois, Taylor Hall, Hampus Lindholm, Swayman, McAvoy, Pasternak. So Fantilli was our first round pick a year ago, and he's looking so good as a 19 year old. This he's going to be such a good two way type forward. Uh, has him listed as a goal scoring forward, first line potential, physical, um, physical, but he's got good checking skills already, good hitting skills for a 19 year old, and he's going to be a beast. Gonna be a beast. Poitras was their top pick in 2022. He's still a ways away at age 20. Lysel, Lowry, and Beecher are all likely with the team next year. Um, Thomas Millich is our goalie of our potentially our starting goalie of the future, but at a bare minimum, our a backup. I mean, our some of our scouts, I think most of our scouts think he's a three star guy. We got a four star there from Andrew Dixon. Yeah, so anywhere between three stars and five stars, but he's only twenty. He's only 20, or 21 now, so he looks pretty good. Uh, scouting, 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 scouting. Tyson Berry, $4.5 million. Twenty-four contracted players. We really have twenty-four contracted players. That's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go here. Well, let's put the players that I think are going to be on the big league roster up there now, so that I have an idea of what the main squad is going to look like. Because I mean, we're going to lose some people once we get to free agency, but that's – I guess we can deal with that when we get to free agency, <laughs> which I think starts beginning of July. So we'll sim up to the draft. We'll do the draft, and then I'll sim forward for a week kind of without you guys sitting here watching until we get to the awards page. And then we'll do the awards real quick, and then I'll sim up to free agency and blah, 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 blah. All right. So Adam Bokvist signed, oh, Jesper Bokvist signed a new contract with Chicago. Benoit Olivier Grew, Thomas Bordalo. And it's time for the draft. All right, so let's start the draft. So let's see who Toronto takes number one, shall we? That's not where I wanted to go, though. I always forget which page it's under. It's this one. Emil Hemming. Finish seven. Look at that shot rating for a 17 year old. Are you crazy? Like, he's not very good. I mean, he's terrible defensively. Um, but holy crap. <laughs> That's impressive. Um, all right, let's just sim ahead a few picks. There's Macklin Celebrini. Uh, very similar. Um, plays for the Chicago Steel in my neck of the woods. Great shot. Like, these are some unbelievable ratings for kids that young. Clark Caswell, another one with a great shot. So three highly skilled forwards going one, two, three. Julian uh, Lanthier 
goes fourth. He was the eighth ranked. He looks okay. Who is the number two ranked player who's still... Berkeley Catton. Whew. Could we potentially move up and get Catlin? Got a defenseman there. Can't really... I mean, he looks okay, but still a ways away. Kivi Haru is somebody that I've always liked. Offensive-minded defenseman. I mean, can I move up and get Berkeley Catton? Off the puck. Let's see if he's there after the next pick. He's not. Okay. So he went to the Sharks at five. Harrison Br Brunecki goes six. So Verglio or Ver Vergilio is next is the next player on the board. I wouldn't I mean I would love Kiviharu. You got an 18 year old goalie who looks like a beast. Wow. Yeah, he Mathis uh, Shimpaka. A lot of goalies in the top 20. There's four goalies in the top 20. Can't go wrong with a finished goalie. Bruins have had a lot of success with that over the years. So I'm looking at Kiviharu or Shimpaka. So when one of them goes, we will try to see if we can trade up for the other one. All right, so neither of them have gone yet. Who who was that? That was Rowan Top. All right. Virgilio. All right, so now we are at pick nine, and Kiviharu and Shimpaka are both there. Who's picking ninth? Carolina. Can we trade with Carolina for that ninth pick? What is it? Not Carolina? Original owner. Oh, they just picked. All right, so it's Ottawa. Okay, I didn't read correctly. Ottawa. So can we make a deal with Ottawa for that pick? So if I give you 27 and... I mean, I can't imagine this is enough, but we'll see. No time for these kind of lopsided offers. What if I gave you both of my first... Yeah, they're not they're not ready to make that deal yet. Okay, that's fine. So let's get back into the draft and see who they take. They say they didn't take either of them. Who did they take? Jamie Agnew. Good mental skills. All right, so who's picking at ten now? Vegas. All right, let's try Vegas. I know this deal would greatly favor us. That's fine. You don't like the sound of that offer. So you don't like 27 and 66. What about 20 and 66? What about... It's next year. What about 66 and 123? I I mean, I bet I could get there, but I don't know if I'm comfortable. Yeah, like I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. Like I don't know if that's enough. Like I feel like that's too – I mean, Kiviharu's good. Let's go back and look at him. All of our scouts have him as a five-star defenseman. Finesse offensive defenseman like Ivan Provorov with a smaller frame. I mean, that's really friggin' good. 
Um, yeah, his offensive skills are already there. He's lacking defensively. He's got the speed. I feel like finding that type of defenseman is rare. So can I make this happen without giving up both first round picks? Because I'm terrified. I don't know, terrified is the wrong word. I'm scared that Vegas will uh that Vegas will take him here with this pick. So if I what if I give you two thirds? What if I give you Nashville's third next season and I give you the sixty six pick this season? You don't like the sound of that offer. I don't want to give up both picks. I just don't. All right, let's hold our breath and see who they take. Okay, they took the goalie. All right, so maybe that puts us in a position moving up to Anaheim at number 11. Maybe that is the pick. 11, and we'll start with 27 because I'd rather not give up 20 if I can help it. You don't like enough about this offer. What if I give you the 27th and who are you interested in? Nobody. What if I give you the 27th and Studnika? You don't like enough about this offer. Okay. You didn't like Studnika, so that's fair. Yeah, they don't have interest like in any of our players. Oh, well, maybe. What about Merkulov? He's worth his current contract. What about Manti Kivi? He was the other one that you guys had some interest in, right? Yeah, I mean, I'd give you Matias Manti Kivi. You don't like enough about that offer. All right, what about rights? Are there any players? Like, you can't have Adam Fantilli. That's just a no. Um, Lock Mellis looks all right. Andre Gasseau. So what if we do a first Andre Gousseau and one of the fourth round picks next season? You don't like that. All right, what about if we do that and one of the thirds next season? I think this is the pick. So I think if we do this, You don't like enough about that offer either, huh? Uh, uh, okay, we're going to try one more pick. Frick. I think I got to, uh, to, um, um, I think I got to... Not greedy, but picky, I think is probably the right word. I think I got too picky on, um, ah, damn it, that sucks. This is a little confusing, though. I spent all year scouting, maybe they all just scouted different players. Xavier Valu. Playmaking offensive defenseman, poor man's Mikhail Sergachev. Yeah, I don't know now if it if it's even worth trading up or if we just go to our next pick. That stinks. I mean, Velo is, is I mean he's probably that guy. I mean, right? That's that's probably the guy that that we want to try to I don't even know if we want to move up, but, and the ratings look all right. Doesn't have a great shot, so he's not going to score many goals. He's still a ways away, but the mental skills are good. He's got a ton of speed, and all of our scouts love him. All right, he's still there at 13. Let's see if we can – yeah, that's the thing is I'm not really – there's nobody here that that I'm, I'm 
all that fussed about. Like Hassan. Scott number three. Who? One, two, three, four. What about Dixon? Yeah, it's weird. They don't scout all the same players. Which I guess makes sense. You don't want the same people scouting everyone, but... Um, I don't know. You know, Venny, he looks okay. A lot of goalies. A lot of goalies. Colton Eddington looks all right. It's weird that they have, like, I have, like, their future rating, but I don't have their... Valu, I, he looks fine, but I don't know that I want to trade up to get him. My guess is that the AI is going to do something wonky, and there will be a. I mean, I guess I, I'm, I'm overlooking the fact that he's only 18. So let's let's see if we can move up to 12 using um, not much of our. I guess 13 with Florida. Uh, trade center. Let's make a trade with Florida. We'll give you our first. You give me your first. Uh, it's not Florida. Who is it? That's not where I wanted to go. Oh, it's Philadelphia, the current owner. Right, okay. So Philadelphia. Let's talk to the Flyers. Shouldn't take much. It really shouldn't. And since I'm not super keen on this draft, offer isn't too appealing. What can we do with this year? It's next year. Offer isn't too appealing. All right. Yeah, I'm not gonna like. I'll I'll move up at this point if I can find a deal that is what I want. All right. So Velo is still there. Uh, Washington. It, it shouldn't take much at this point to move up for that pick. I'd rather keep twenty if I can help it. Heal doesn't do anything for you. What I mean, I guess I could do 20. But it really shouldn't take much at that point to flip it. That's weird. Okay. Okay, so they still haven't... Okay, so we still have... The Devils. And if you guys don't like watching this stuff, let me know. I'd be more than happy to just kind of come back and go, this is the deal I have made. 15. What if I do 20? gonna do 20 I'd rather do the later third round pick deal doesn't do anything for you all right fine 66th overall let's make the offer let's see if they accept it's rejected all right <laughs> and there goes Velo. all right that's fine let's skip to our pick so Whipple Picorni Quinn and Colton Eddington all right so now it's our pick uh, Bennett Seneke is who our assistant GM thinks we should take. Our head scout thinks we should take. 
Elliot Letalien, the number 30 ranked overall player, and our head coach thinks we should take Alexis Doucette. So an 18-year-old center, four stars, four stars, four stars, there, yeah, all four stars. And he looks all right. I mean, he looks all right. Yeah, I mean, he's way off, but he looks all right. Seneki, another 18-year-old. It's kind of a grinder type. I don't know that he's an all-around forward, but and then Alexis Doucette. 18-year-old, he's, I mean, he's a little more developed, but still, that shot is not great for an 18-year-old. So, let's look at attributes. Let's look at attacking. So, who's got the best shot left? We got this guy, 19-year-old. We have him scouted. 120... Oof. That's a goalie. It's a goalie. A goalie. Yep. Three goalies. Are the top three left. So Seneki has three six three. Jordan Marshment. Ooh. I think there's our pick, guys. Jordan Marshment out of Portland. Four star, four star, four star, four star. Yeah, they all have him rated as four star, but uh, needs to improve his passing. He's 17 years old. Got a good slap shot already. He's got the good mental. He's not very quick, so the speed is going to be an issue, but he's got good checking ratings. I think that might be the pick. I think Marshman might be the pick. Let's see. What other options? We have Merrick Bowden, Bodoin. Yeah, only three stars there. Matthew Bergen, 18 years old, three stars. I think we're going to go Marshman. I think we're going to go Jordan Marshman. Yeah, I like his ratings. I like the determination. <clears throat> Again, not very fast. But strong for a 6'2", 211-pound, 17-year-old. Jordan Marshman, welcome to the Boston Bruins. All right, let's go to our next pick. Uh, Soretke, yeah, they all want us to take a goalie, which I'm fine with. And I think it's going to be Soretke. Good rebound control, good recovery, good reflexes. Stick handling needs some work. Blocker and gloves still need a lot of work. But the determination is fantastic. Let's look at the goaltending ratings. So, Biega looks like he's got... No, 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 no. It's, I don't think it's even a question. I don't think it's even a question. Although, I don't care about his speed. Anticipation, bravery, determination, work rate is a 17. I think Soretki's that guy, man. Well, he's got a 17 as well. Vinny has got the better blocker and glove right now. Maybe it's Vinny. He, yeah, I think it's Vinny. He's he's better off. Stick handling is rough, but he's got the better blocker, better glove. And I don't know how you can pass up on a uh, finished goaltender if you're the Boston Bruins. So Emil Vinny will be our second first round pick. 27th overall. Let's fast forward. So Haas, Giles, and Cole Hudson, although there is still the number 23 overall pick, Merrick Bodon, uh, Bodon, Bodoin, Bodoin, Bowden, Bowden, Bodoin. I can't pick him because I can't say his damn name. They want me to take Jason Haas, ranked at 94. Uh, Bradley wants to take his Nash Giles, ranked at 98. Yeah, we're not doing that here in the second round. That doesn't make any sense. So let's look at... Who has the best offensive ratings? Looks like Matt Patern. Yeah, an 18 year old. What do our scouts think? Again, not particularly fast, but our scouts think he's a four star guy, four star guy, four star guy, four star guy. Yeah, I kind of like that. Matt Patern. He's ranked number 58 overall, so it might be a bit of a stretch, but. 
excuse me, but I think it's... Let's look and see if there are any elite defensive players, I guess, left. Merrick Howell looks like he's going to be a very good defensive defenseman. But three stars across the board. Yeah, I think Paterne is the guy. Okay, so it's right on. We picked him 57th. He was rated 58th. So it's not much of a stretch. Let's fast forward to our next pick. Yeah, so we still have some guys here in the top, uh, um, uh, top 40, top 50. Uskowski, 18-year-old defenseman, offensive-minded defenseman, but that just unbelievable work rate. Offensive defenseman like Leon Gawunki needs to improve his defense. That's a problem for a defenseman. That's a problem for a defenseman. Not a very good checker. I mean, he's okay off the puck. He's not a good hitter. He's not bad, actually. Merrick Howell is the good defensive one who can't shoot. Um, Alexander Kontinen. Oh, he's a center, but still, not bad. What do... Let's look at our scouts. Skewer, see our scouts think are still kind of the best players available. Niles Jetton. Oof. These guys really all have him as a number five, as a five star defenseman. Offensive defenseman like Philip Hronick. They all have him listed as a five star guy. Trent Zwick is somebody we should keep an eye on, an overager, which makes sense. Um, Offensive minded defenseman, good work rate, good stamina, okay speed. He's only 18. I don't think he's ever going to be good enough defensively. He could be kind of like a Tory Krug. Which, I mean, yeah, you draft someone who ends up like Tory Krug, you're going to take it, right? Um, William Leonard. Keep coming back to Buzkowski. Yeah, we're going to take him. 18-year-old defenseman, offensive-minded defenseman. Let's go to our next pick. They want us to take Depot, or somebody that we looked at, another offensively minded defenseman. Uh, our GM wants us to take William Leonard. And then our head coach wants Aiden Suligny. Who, meh. Let's go back to attributes. And we're looking at defensive already. So. Checking. Yeah, he's a super overager at 22. 20. Here's a 20-year-old out of the University of Notre Dame. He's never going to score, but that's a really good defensive defenseman. Does anybody have him rated as higher than three stars? No, but because he's also not ranked, he'll probably be there with our next pick. But he looks really good. Wow. Okay. Bryce Pickford, an 18 year old. Continent. Hunter Lang, meh. Continent looks okay. Three stars across the board, right? Yeah. Three stars across the board. Oh, he's a forward. He's a forward. 
defensive-minded forward, pretty well-balanced for an 18-year-old out of the draft, truth be told. Work rate isn't great, but he has a decent shot. Yeah, we'll take Conton in here. So now we're in the fourth round, and I think we can I think we can safely start taking some of these guys. I mean, I'm good taking the overager. He looks pretty damn good. He's gonna be a brute, but I'm good with that. He could I mean he literally could um make our team this season. All right, so Caden Glover, James Swan. Christian Epperson, all non uh, non ranked players, which is interesting. Caden Glover, again an overager. Let's go back to attacking. He's got the best shot left. We got Foster Cooper on here, a nineteen year old, three stars, three stars, all three stars. Okay. Um, stick handling. Igor Kuzuma. Whoa, oh, he's twenty-two. Never mind. He's twenty-two. Justin. Wow. Okay, this guy looks pretty good. They all have him rated as three stars, but. That's a great shot. He's not strong. He's tiny. 5'7", a buck 74. But he's super fast and he has a great shot. He scored 25 goals last season in Drummondville. He's currently hurt. Yeah, and he's a goal scorer, man. He is a goal scorer. We're going to take Justin Cote. Let's look at the... Best, oh, wow. Still a lot of ranked players left. Uh, Luca Cagoni. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like a pretty good pick at this point. A 20 with the creativity here with an Irwin Will fan. William Whitelaw, shot's not great. Well, the slap shot isn't great. Stick handling is okay. 19 years old, out of Wisconsin. Again, three stars on all of them. I mean, Kagoni looks... I mean, for a 19-year-old, he's really well-developed. Got the good work rate. Yeah, we'll take Cagnoni, Luca Cagnoni, here in the fifth round. Now let's start. Let's start taking players that. Um, do we have any? Are there any like five star guys that our scouts still like? So Trent Swick is still there, the overager. They all think he's four stars, but he's twenty already. James Swan is another one who's twenty. Helmer Steif. That's a name. 19 years old. It's all, all right. Nicholas Larson. And again, another older player at 22. 21. 21. 20 defenseman. Good defensive defenseman for a 20-year-old. Three-star, three-star. I think we need more of this. Like some more of this physical style. I'm, yeah, I'm good with this. Jason uh, Spizaka. He's another one who could potentially be on the team next season. Decent checking, good hitting, good... No, oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Cole Belouz. No. I think it's Swick. I think it's Trent Swick. I mean, he's not there yet, and I don't know if he's ever going to get there, but I mean, power winger, second line power winger, power winger. They all think he's like Mason Marshment. The sixth round, sure. 
And with our, oh, I think that's the end of the draft. It's the end of the draft. I guess we didn't have a seventh round pick. All right. So that is the end of our draft. We will exit. They wanted to give us two seconds for a first. Jordan Marshman already wants to be signed. I don't think he's ready. <laughs> Continent isn't ready either. And neither of these guys are ready to go. Cagnoni's not ready. All right. Um, yeah, Hemming, uh, Celebrini, Caswell, Smith, and that is the draft. So I'm going to go ahead now and quickly sim ahead to the awards. We'll look at the awards. And actually, you know what? I'm going to sim all the way up to free agency. And we'll come back and we will backtrack and we'll look at the awards. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We're going to do free agency. And then um, we're going to call it an episode. I'm going to sim ahead to the start of next season because I don't want this to be like two hours long. I got a bunch of other videos I have to record. So I don't know if we're going to have all of the awards, but the Calder Trophy, I went to Connor Bedard. No surprise there. Oh, God, look at those ratings. Just insane. Uh, Zach Roberts, the Jim Gregg. I think we can find this stuff someplace else, can't we? Uh, where is it? Awards. All right. So <clears throat> Nathan McKinnon won the Art Ross. The Rocket went to Miko Rantanen. Ted Lindsay to Nathan McKinnon. Norris went to Ekblad. <clears throat> Vezina went to Shestyorkin for the second straight year. Jennings to Shestyorkin again. Selke went to Mark Stone of Vegas. Calder to Simon, or no, wait a second. I was doing all this wrong. Yeah, Rantanen won the Art Ross. The Rocket, the the the, the Rocket Richard went to Rantanen. The Lindsay went to Connor McDavid. The Norris went to Darnell Nurse. Okay. Vezina went to Vasilevsky. Swayman finished third. Jennings went to Vasilevsky. Selkie went to Mark Stone. Patrice finished second. Calder went to Connor Bedard. Jim of the Year, Zach Roberts of Edmonton. Lady Bing went to Mika Zabanajad. Mark Messier went to Rantanen. Clancy went to Taves. Jack Adams went to Jay Woodcroft. Hart went to Dreisaitl. Con Smythe to Dreisaitl. All Star Game MVP, Line. And the Masterson went to Kucherov. All right. So it is free agency time. Uh, we got about. $10 million or so to play with. Salary cap's $82 million. We're sitting at $74 million. So If we look at free... Actually, let's look at our roster first and see exactly what we need. Uh, we need a goaltender. That's for sure. We absolutely need a goaltender. Um, defensively, we've got Lindholm, Lowry, Stanley, Foot. We did sign Mastro Domenico, who was, one of, who was one of our draft picks, so we signed him. Definitely need a defenseman. One, two, three, four, five. We have six defensemen, so we need a... I would say we need a top four defenseman, maybe top six. We're going to go McAvoy, what, McAvoy, Foot, Lindholm, Lowry, I guess. We definitely need a defenseman. Uh, Forward-wise, we have one, two... We have one, two, three, four, I guess Beecher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we need a forward. We need a forward. We signed this Demir uh, Javariov last offseason. He just came over this year. He's 30. Um, been playing in the K. It's been all right, but he's more of a depth guy. So we could use forward. Could use a defenseman. So what do we got? And we need a goalie. That's the other thing. Uh, so we got Stamkos. What does he want? It's a curiosity. $10 million. No, I'm good. Uh, there's Elias Lindholm. That was somebody I was looking at in the offs or in the in the regular season. What does he want? Ah, it's so much money. D'Angelo can kick rocks. Wouldn't sign him for free. Uh Kasperi Kapanen. 22 goals last season for Pittsburgh. What does he want? And that's a reason. I mean, it's a long contract. I don't know that I'd want to give him that much, but that's a reasonably 
Christ contract. And we got Sam Reinhardt, who was somebody that we were looking at as well last year. I think maybe Reinhardt's probably a better fit for us. 3.4. I'm not giving him seven years. I'll give him four. I'll make the first two years four million. Reinhardt would be a good fit, I think. You need a goalie. You need a backup goalie. Matt Murray. That's three million for five. What if we gave you two point seven, three, and two point seven? I don't know if those are good contracts or not, to be completely honest. And we need a defenseman. And we could do another short term guy like we did last year. Brandon Dillon's thirty three, Jake Muzzin. What does he want? Oh, five million dollars, no. Um Alec Martinez. Oh, he's getting up there in age. The ratings are starting to drop. There's Patrice, he's still out there. What does he want? Two point eight for two years? What about two point five for two years? Be happy to bring Patrice back for that. Uh, and then we need, again, we still need that defenseman. Brad Hunt, Blake Wheeler. And the ratings are starting to dip for Blake. You know, only 18 goals last year, but a really good rating. Seven and a half, seven and a half rating. Matt Roy, is it Wah? Or is it Roy? I don't know, but either way, he's pretty good. What does he want? 2.6. What if we did 4 at 2.5? Let's sim ahead a bit and see if we can sign anybody. David Krejci inducted into the Hall of Fame. Good for Krejci. Duclair, Marcheseau, off. Ooh, Jonathan Marcheseau. He's 33 now, though. Anaheim offered Reinhardt. Minnesota offered Reinhardt. I wonder if there's some way to look and see if there's another team that made a better offer. A lot of people offering Sam Reinhardt. Close to signing with the Blues. Is there some way to look? It's not the right guy. Yeah, it just says withdraw bid. I don't think we can make another bid once it's been made. So if, if that bid falls through, then we'll come back and we'll talk to Kapanen, assuming he's still there. I mean, there's a ton of free agents. A lot of players we can go after if we need to. Connor Hellebuck is a free agent. Not that we need a goalie, but Connor Hellebuck is a free agent. That's a big deal. Still nothing. I mean, I would love Elias Lindholm. Man. Ugh, such a big contract. I can't afford that. I mean, not for a 29-year-old. Not $10 million for years and years and years. Still nobody is signed with us. Or anybody else, it doesn't look like. Okay, so we get Roy, or Wah, as it were. Matt Roy, like a very solid defenseman. He's not going to score a ton of points. Only had 12 points last year for LA, but 
Very, very solid defensively, I think. Yeah, really good positional ratings. He's only 27. Let's go ahead and sign Matt Roy. You'll have to tell me in the comments if it's Roy or Wah. So Patrice rejected our offer. We do sign Matt Murray. So we got Murray and Roy locked in. So we're still waiting on Reinhardt, which is sort of the big fish, so to speak. And we can always fill in our forward line with older players like we did last year with... Um, where do we stand financially? You know, we still have about $4 million, which is enough to sign Reinhardt, right? That's what we offered Reinhardt, so... And I got a lot of players on the roster that may not be there, so we can kind of scale back on some of that if we need to. Okay, so Kapanen signed with Tampa. Jersey gets Marcia, so still nothing on Ka on uh, on Reinhardt. That's the big one. Come on, Sam. He is still a free agent, right? I didn't miss the signing. Yeah, he's still there. Oof, look at all those offers. All right. Keep our fingers crossed. As soon as this signing comes back one way or the other, I think I'm going to call it. And I will spend the rest of the offseason trying to uh, plug some additional small holes if necessary. Still nothing on Reinhardt. Still nothing on my Cam Fowler. Oof. Only Mata for a couple of picks. Shattenkirk to Toronto. No, Shattenkirk to St. Back to St. Louis for Yuknevich, a second and a third. Let's look at the trade block. Is there anybody there of interest? Geeky is back on the block. Craig Smith back on the block. How did he do last season? 15 goals, 13 assists, 6.83. I mean, maybe. Maybe. If we need to just fill that spot. Like, if we can't sign... Um, if we can't sign Reinhardt, that might not be a bad fallback option. All right, so Anaheim signs Sam Reinhardt. Yeah, that's a lot more than I was going to pay him. Uh, all right, so we got to go back and see what is available. Uh, and I'll kind of give you my plan, and then we'll move forward. All right, so forward-wise, we still got Lindholm is still there. I mean, if there's some way I could make that work, I would. Uh, Stamkos wants a lot of money. Uh, Lindholm wants a lot of money. Duclair. Wants $8 million a year. Um, need a rider. I mean, he's okay. 7.38 point every other game. He was a 20 goal scorer three years in a row. He's an option. Need a rider might be an option. Coming back to Blake Wheeler. As a third line type guy, what does he want? Yeah, it's reasonable. I mean, can I can I figure out a way to get Bergeron and Wheeler back, putting Patrice and, and Blake on the same line? I mean, that might be that might be a thing. JVR is available. That doesn't look like. I mean, there's some decent names on here. But again, we're just looking for depth. So I think the Wheeler-Bergeron thing is what's appealing to me. So I think I might reapproach Patrice, see if I can get him locked down. Go back to Blake, talk to him, see if I can get him locked down. And that um, is probably going to be my offseason. Maybe Nito need a rider um, on a fallback. 
But uh, either way, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, when we come back, it'll be the beginning of um, uh, beginning of the regular season. We'll, we'll take a look at, at how the rest of the offseason played out, and that's going to be that. So thanks for watching. Talk to you all soon.